Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we'll be working on a simple ping pong game using the Godot engine. In this tutorial, we'll learn some basic character movements for our player. Then also we'll learn how to update the score for each player. Then we're also going to learn how to control, how to add an AI for our opponent. Then that's it, we're going to learn how to use the Godot custom drawing node to be able to display our players and objects. And yeah, that's it. So let's head on to the code. Okay, let's start off by creating a project for our game. Name your project ping pong. The name is whatever you want. Then for the project parts, I'm going to use the default part which was set by Google. You can also use your own parts, or you just have to use browse, click the browse button, then navigate to the parts you're choosing. But well, I'm just going to stick with this one. Create a folder. Then for a render, set it to mobile. Mobile is best used for the 2D games for both mobile and desktop, I think. Yeah, I think there are some description here, so you can just check it out. Then set this to none. Then click create and edit. Okay, now that we've created our project, let's start off by creating a main screen for our game. So click on the user interface and this will lead you to the 2D scene. Then double click on the node, the control node to rename it. Name this to me. You can also click hit the F2 key on your keyboard to rename it. Control S to save. Then let's save this. Yeah. Then Click on the play button, or you can hit F5 on your keyboard to select this as a currency. It's going to pop up a dialog for you, telling you that there is no currency for your game. So we're going to select this as our currency. And yeah, so this is where all our game is going to be displayed. So I think for now, let's start by creating, a, by adding a background for game so go to project setting then under rendering click on the environment for the default clear color i think you can set it to any color which we are going to use for the background i'm just going to use black then since we're here let's assign for action some input action for our player so these are going to be the controls that our players are going to listen to to be able to that we're going to assign so our player can respond to those actions. So let's click, let's add move up. This is going to be used to make our player move up, then move down. Since we don't need our power to move left or right, I think these two are okay. Now for it, we need to assign some keys on your keyboard, click W. For the up key or then click up you can also add some gamepad control i think what is i think top i think this is going to be used for the top key but i think these two are just okay then down let's click on s move down and down key and yeah, I think that is it. So now let's start by creating our player. Now, for both the player and the computer script, I think we need to create a base class since both have similar attributes like their height and width with their color. And we should just make it easier to change our code in case of any problems yeah okay now let's 
head over to our script and we need to create a base class for the player and the computer which both can inherit from and be able to reuse some of their attributes and yeah so the base class should inherit from a character body 2d so basically this character body 2d is used for detecting collision while moving then i think they aren't affected by the engine physics like friction and gravity since our player does not need to be affected by any of those like gravity i think this is a great node to use so just click on the inherit button then for the template set it to empty then change the name from new script to actor dot GD for our part. Okay, now I think just click on the create button. Okay, yeah. Okay, now first of all, we need to register this actor um, script as a type of node so both the player and the computer can hear it from. So I'm going to type class name dot actor yeah now we need some set of value which like the width for the players and the height then the color speed so let's write the export keyword my speed is equals to 200 value. So what this export is going to do is going to allow us to be able to edit this variable type in our inspector. I think we'll see that very soon. But I think Godot has actually has a documentation attached to it, so you can just check it out. Just hold your control and click on whatever you want to check on like this export. Okay, yeah. Uh, as you can see, I have an editable in the inspector dot and save to things to control here. Yeah. So it's actually a good stuff to check out later. So now that we have our player speed, let's create our button weight and height, then the color. So export bar. But oh, it's not bad. Let's call it paddle. Paddle width. Mm. Paddle width. I think we're going to set this to 10.0. So export paddle height. Let's set this to 50. And I'll say wow. Uh, and let's just actually write a type for it and we're going to use a color dot i think let's make our paddle white so yeah so now all these values we'll be able to see them in our inspector and be able to edit them so let's check it out. So click create a new scene and go to our other nodes. Then uh, you can see the actor.gd um, GD registered to our node type. So now all this, oh, I think let's create this. Uh, okay, yeah. You can see all the values we created here. Now they are editable in our inspector. Like now you can decide to change the color of our button to whatever you like. You can use blue, yellow, gray, anyone. You can change the speed of your paddle, of the width too, and our height. So I'm just going to reset this value and change paddle width. So now, 
Okay, let's start off by creating a player. So we name this to player. That's what I say. Then I can say send. Now, okay, Goros is going to flash a warning to you. This is just trying to say that you haven't had a collision ship if you can see it here, so your body won't be able to detect collision for now, but that is okay. Let's just add a collision now. So look for a collision shape 2D. Wait. Now, we're going to make this a square, so other shape in your inspector. Based on new rectangle shape. Okay. I think that's good. So let's zoom in. Now, what we we'll actually try to do is make this collision shape take the size of our arrow, that is the width and height we specify here. So, I think let's start working with that player. So, the player, your player script will actually be attached to your actor script. So, just detach it, you attach, then make your player inherit from the actor those GD to so inherit empty, then okay, then create. Okay, good. Now, uh, okay, I think let's actually try to see what we are working on. So, let's go to the Add our script and draw our player. So I'm going to use Godot custom draw drawing node two for two D. So draw rect is going to help us to draw a rectangle. So this rectangle, once we want to draw it, is actually we actually want it to start from this point. But later on, we'll actually make it start from like the middle of for now. I think starting from this pivot, pivot point is okay. So, just break two, zero, zero. Let's just start from this center of the board. Then, specify for the width and write paddle width. Then, Height, paddle height. Okay. I think. Okay, we need to also specify color. So just add the color for the rectangle. I think that is okay. So, yeah, let's see what we're working on. So, okay, turn F6 on your keyboard to play this current scene or you can click on this. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, so this is our player now. As you can see, just like I said, so let me just drag these player points over here so you can see what I'm saying. So our player is just going to start from this middle side, but later on we want it to center itself around this area. So let just Go to the ball visible collision shape so you can actually see it where one okay now you can see so now for the player let's start with its movement i think the movement is okay we can start with its movement now okay so, first of all, I'm going to write an already function. So, we're going to get this collision shape already. Let's uh, this collision shape. Collision shape is okay. Get no. If you don't want to use this get new, I think you can also use the dollar sign. Dollar sign collision here. So all of this, this is just going to give you this. 
So I think using get name is okay. Now we are going to call our ready function. So what we want to do now is we want to make, as I said before, we want to make the collision shape take the width and height of the panel. So on ready collision shape dot shape dot instant is equals to vector two I think we still need to change this value for the shape but for now there's a pattern and one's in motion Oh, sorry about paddle. Paddle, yeah, paddle weight and paddle height. Okay, so let's test this out and see what. What's going on? Okay. Oh, sorry. Extends. Not. Oh, over the S. Okay. Yeah. Now you can see the paddle is the collision shape is now taking the side of the paddle, but we, as you can see, there are still some extra spaces we need to take care of. So I think let's start working on that. So. I think firstly we actually need to get the center of the paddle, which is so we need to get from here to down here or from here to here. So, so let's say paddle center and paddle center I think is okay like is so I think for this first zero, we need to specify. I think we need a negative button add sorry add weight divided by two. So what is this going to? Do? As you can see, like we saw before, the panel started from this point and drew itself. So we want it to start from here, which is like this. So what we're just going to do is divide the weight by two which will make it come around this side then giving it a negative yeah so how do we divide by two then a negative button center which is this side like this to make it scale up to yeah but do do center so in our ready function, that's why the paddle center is equal to the paddle height divided by two. Now, some of you might be wondering why are we right using this paddle center? Why can't we just use this in the actor school? Well, let's say you decide to change the height for one of your players now. Now, if you use, if this is in your um, actual script, then even though you change the size, it will still be the same. You will still have both um, the player and the computer will have the same center. And so your collision, so it will give you likely progress. So I think it's best to use this in your player script. So once you save, then for this extent, we're going to use paddle width divided by two. Since the collision shape is the collision shape, when we want to scale it, it's going to actually take both sides. So if you decide to add like one to this, it's going to add one on the left or right 
on both sides of the collision. So let's divide this by two, then change this to your center. Then yeah, I think this should work correctly. Okay, yeah. If that's good. So as you can see now, our paddle the paddle is this way. Okay, now you can see that the collision shape is seeking the full size of the paddle. And you can see our paddle now. So now let's work on the movement of the player. So in your player script, you're going to add a physics process function. And inside of it, we're going to use get input. This is going to be a function. Then, okay, then let's call the move and slide. Now, wait, wait to get input function. Now, this function is going to, not going to return anything, so it does leave it as a void. Now, what to get the direction to so, wait the variable for direction. Is equal to input dot get axis move down and our move up. So what this get axis is just going to do is get our direction either in the negative or a positive positive yeah or if an input is pressed so if the move down is pressed i think this is going to return a negative one if the move up is pressed this is going to actually return you one then if not is actually pressed, this is just going to return zero so then let's add our velocity dot y since our player needs to move on the y axis is equals to our direction the speed okay then i think this should work so let's test it out okay but well, our player is moving on the wrong side oh sorry in your computer the the negative up is actually a negative value then down is actually positive don't really know why so but with this so down downwards since it's returning a positive and downward means go down okay yeah now but now as you can see our player is actually leaving the screen i think we don't really want that so let's clamp our player so give it a particular limit where it can move so we're going to say position dot on the y axis climb then our present player position dot y then button center right but add and what I'm doing then we we'll also need to get the size of our screen so i think that is best let's just write it here we are already for screen size so in case we still need it we we'll probably need it later get the view of correct dot side so there is now screen size dot y and it's up at center again so i think this should be able to restrict our player for moving or moving above here and here so yeah 
when our player can't go beyond those directions. So I think that's good. Okay. Okay, so I think that's good now. So let's attach our player, insert our player to the main scene. Okay, now. Now let's move our player around here. You know what? Let's duplicate it. So, so this will just kind of create your clamp so they can be okay. Okay, now that's good. But now this other part was going to change it to our computer, but this we're controlling both players. So I think for now let's start working on the ball. Okay, so now create a new thing. Then our ball is going to be character body to be again. Rename this or add a collision shape. You can see it here already. Then also we need a notifier. So that will be used to we use this you know, whenever the ball goes out of our screen. So whenever the ball goes out here or here, we'll be able to tell so we can know the winner. Then I think that is okay. Then okay, ball create. Yeah. Now just save the same the ball scene. Okay, save. Okay, for our ball, let's add a collision shape. Our ball is going to be of shape circle since our ball needs to be round. And let's try this room. Mm. Okay, for the most fire. I think this is okay. So let's start working on our ball speed. So, first off, we need a speed for our ball. So, export speed. I think our ball should fire 100. Then the radius of the ball, as you can see. So we also need the ball to scale around its collision shape, just like we did for the player before. So, uh, ball radius. Okay. I think all should be around. Then let's get our collision shape. Collision shape that's okay. Then we have collision shape. We have actually three those excellent. Relationship. Okay. Now um, let's draw our ball just like we did for the other two. Draw circle. Then we need to specify some parameters. So we're going to write this. Let's check this out. Okay, so for the, we need the position, its radius and its color. So I think for the position, we can use as vector 2.0. Then for its radius, let's, um, that is going to be our ball radius. Then color, color. That is okay. Now let's give our ball to the situation. 
relationship dot expect dot radius. Oh, sorry, not expect. I mean shape. Yeah, shape dot radius is going to equal to our ball radius. Okay, so let's move this ball to the center so we can see actually what we are doing. F6. Okay, that's good. So, got our ball. Now, let's add some movements and bouncing for our ball. So, right on this process. Collision. So we're going to get the collision whenever our ball bounces on any of the value. This is going to be of a mobile point. Velocity, which is already a value which is already set for the character for the 2D. Velocity, then let's multiply this by our delta. Okay, that's good. So now we're going to write if a collision happened. So our velocity, we want to add more speed so that to make our ball move faster in this collision that is either with the wall or the pad. So I think let's actually specify a parameter for our. If I cons and speed, I think that's A. And that's I one point two. Okay. Now I think your character body to do already has a bounce method to let's see. Okay, velocity the bounce. Let's check that out. So this is just going to return a new vector bounce of the thing defined by giving up. So let's just work on our ball bounce. Just look. Then okay, now we to get our collision normal collision with this collision to get it's normal. Okay, yes, then let's in increase the ball speed. So I think this is going to increase our ball speed on each collision. So let's test that out. Okay, so let's instance our ball. Yeah. To the center. Let it do a child of our main. Now we're going to need a wall that our ball is going to bounce off us. Now I think our ball is just going to go out of the screen. Now let's raise a wall. So add a child node of static body to the then we say add a collision shape. Okay. So rename this to top. Think let's save this as a same. Just name it walk. Okay, so let's enter the same. Okay, now for all let's add a collision shape. Angle. Then let's kill this. Equate the size to let's say one twenty. I think that is okay. So say this. Let's okay. Let's do then. Let's position this. Enter. Okay. It's not two. Okay. I think that is good. That's not clear. So let's say this then if you probably duplicate this 
to let's make this uh bottom wall to give the wall that is going to be on the floor I think this is okay um, okay let's test this out oh we will also need to do the direction so whenever the ball points on the screen we want it to pick a direction so we either want it to either go here i think here here either here or here so let's do that it's in power ball okay so first off i think we we'll need a way to know which player gets the ball so whenever a player wins we want the ball to go to go to the player direction if, so if the player let's say the player one wins we want the ball to go to his direction but if the computer wins we want the ball to go to his direction the next round so okay let's create a variable user direction then set this to true so let's write a function on direction. Okay. Now for velocity, we want a vector two for the x direction, which is what I just explained now. So Push player stone to get the ball so we want it to be a negative speed if it's the user turn that is if it's the player turn the ball should move this way to the left but if it's the composer turn the ball should move to the right so minus speed in user direction that is for the player else speed now for the y direction i think we want the ball to either pick a right or side so this is the ball is going to its player direction we want it to either go upward like this or downward so for that we actually need to add another variable Random is equals to uh, equals to random number generator dot new okay then our form ready let's actually have random dot random parts so this is actually going to give us a different value and um, different value whenever the program is run. So now for the random y direction, let's add let's write speed if random dot range. So this is going to give us a random integer between Let's uh, minus one to let's say two. So let's just write this if so if this number is greater than zero, we want our ball to move downwards. Yeah, so that would be good. But else let our ball move upward. So it's going to go on the negative side that is opposite on the Y direction. Okay. Okay, this. Okay. So I think this problem. Okay, this is. I think. Uh, okay, yeah. So we had extra spaces. So if I just delete it. So. Yeah, I think our ball should take a rather direction and start moving. So I think let's just call it for now ready function. So 
but we're still going to change it. Now let's just okay. Now you can see. So our body decides to move upward. Okay, now you can see the collision is working. So I think that is good. So okay. So so I think now let's do whenever the ball goes out of the screen, be able to know the winner. So go to your ball screen on this visible visible on specified as fire go to its node screen existed connected to the ball. Or oh, I think let us mean this to on screen is it or screen is it dead? So connect. Okay. So now, so now we need to know which direction the ball is whenever it's out of the screen. So if the ball, right, let's zoom out. So if the ball is on this direction, which is going to be less than zero, then we know the computer one. But if it's on this direction, we know the player one. Yes. Get rid of this. So, to write our user direction is equal to global position dot x if it's greater than zero. So this is going to either return a true or false. So if the position is greater than zero, we know our player one. So then I think we need a signal. So us when we want to do our the score, so think for the top, let's write our signal in over okay so now let's game over dot emit this is going to pass the user direction okay so let's just move this off both our physics okay that's good okay i think the last thing we need is the starting position of the ball so whenever the ball goes out of the screen and want the game to reload we need the ball to go to the center so in here oh let's write it on the physics process on start position okay so all we're just going to do is just our position position is equals to i think we're going to pass a position so you see that very soon this would be of a vector two. Okay, I think our boss grid is complete. Yeah. So let's head on to our main function. Click now. Let's add the map to the to specify our players. And the ball's position. Then one the last one for the ball control D to duplicate. So this is going. Oh, you know what? Let's let this access original and create some new to store our player. Oh no, let's look for no. 
Okay. So there is no text at our pair and this. So this is going to be our pair. Okay. Let's add another node like this. Layer two. This is going to be our computer. Oh, okay. So let's add this as a tag. Then to my two D. Okay. So I think lastly, our ball starting point. I don't think okay. we don't need this since. All we just need to do is just center our ball in the screen. So all we're just going to do is just get our screen size. I think, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So we'll see that very soon. So I think now let us attach a script to our main. A script does wait. So first off, let's get our screen size over. Mm. Nice. People should get that's not real for side. Now let's get put up this. So I'm ready. Wow. I think this part one. Get memory equals to linear one. They want that. Okay. So let's just duplicate this control shift D on the keyboard and let's do this player two. So in player. Um, I think something is wrong here. Okay, very good. So we need this part two. <laughs> now let's get our ball. Our ball gets no. Then I think let's get our position for both the player one and two. Already we are start starting position one as for the player one. Get let's say player one of my two D duplicate this. Position two, they are two, number two. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think that's good. So save this. So I think let's start with our players. Or so player one. This is going to be where we store our player. Their scores, each player scores. So player one, player two. That is to zero. Now, okay. I think let's also have a variable called app screen, which is going to be app of your screen to specify the ball starting position. So, create a variable app screen. And this is going to be of a type vector two. Okay, yeah. We write a function ready. Our screen is equals to a vector two. We're going to get our screen size plus x divided by two. That's to get half of its width. That's going to be the center. 
then spin size dot y divided by two. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, I think now let's draw some. Um, I think that is a top wall. So let's draw some line to specify our top wall, then a border in the middle of the wall. So we're going to use the form draw again. Look at the comments dash dash one draw. Dash line, which going to write the vector two, going to write half spring dot x plus zero, and another vector two, which is going to write our half spring dot x, then spring size dot y. Then a color. Okay, color the color dot white. Now I think let's actually go to documentation. So first up, we specify the form, which is this. This is going to be um, where our line starts from. So we wanted it to start from the center of the screen, which is going to be here at the top. So zero, which makes it start from half screen here, zero. Then two, vector two half screen, then screen size of y. So half screen, which is going to make it stop here, around here, like that, I think. So then call, then also we need the width and our dash side. So let's we do we need a variable for that. Okay, I think I just create some variable for and this is going to be dash width and right so it doesn't distance mm, let's use the same lastly border border wall it this is going to be how this width of our border. So this is 15, zero. Okay, I think that's okay. So let's go in here at our dash width, dash distance. Okay. Um, this our uh, border wall width is going to be for our top walls. That is how large we want the width for our border to be. Width or height? I think that's supposed to be height. Okay. So let's draw now our top wall. No line. Okay, then the line, so it's going to start from vector 2.0. Then we need vector 2. The spring size, the x yeah, equals to 0. It's the color. So you can use any color you want. Just going to use yellow. Then the border, the other one with. So I think let's hide this dot there, hide. So 
those changes. Advantage, okay. So let's just duplicate this for uh, bottom wall. Then I think I just need to change some of this value. Mm, zero start from zero inside the screen size dot yellow also okay I think that's good so let's test this out okay now we can see so I think let us go to a table of the collision say okay now so as you can see our game is coming so let's pass this okay I think we have some kind of uh, oh oh okay so this is supposed this actually is supposed to be a big map you know the map I'm sorry so, Let's run this again. Okay, yeah. Now we don't have those errors anymore. Now, okay, now you can see. So now let, I think we should start with our score for each player. Oh, instead of the score, let's start with the position. So we want to position the player just like the ball when the ball starts. We want to position the player to so if the player is around there and the ball goes out, we want the player to go back to its original position. So for your player one, click on the marker 2D, then just on your your I think this is our snap tool. So in just position, just going to bring this near this screen our player two. Okay, I think that's okay. For our ball, you can center it anywhere. Things already in our script, we already have app screen size, so we're just going to specify the position for it. So, okay, now for our actor script, it's first script, so let's go down from start position. Um, so we're going to pass this position just like what we did for the ball vector 2 that is going to return the ball then our position equals EOS okay I think that is good now let's go to our main script we create a function ready ready position so all this we're going to call add one is our player one I think that position so so I think Go to pass the start. The start period is the position. Change this parameter. Duplicate is okay. Now for the board, I think the board dot. I think what we do is well. Okay, start position. Okay, so we just we're going to pass in our half screen it is going to center our ball so I think let's just try let's just move this there too so we can actually see it was our ball over here and just run okay go oh. I think we have so on the ready function was all our 
ready position okay so run it again oh yeah as you can see now so our ball was able to center in the middle of our screen then our position our paddle were also able to take their position okay i think that's good okay i think right now let's try working on this ball so we can display it so i'm going to close this okay then add a canvas canvas layer in this to page with d okay so save branch as the same page with d okay now let's enter so let's actually add a label which we use to display our score. So let's name this to score score four one. This will be up here. One score duplicate this score two. So now I think all just need to do zero. Okay, so just let this score two. Is our corporate? Let's go here. Let it take it to the right, then move it around here, then for our score one. Let it say. Okay, so I think let's actually get the zero to be able to display our score. Yeah, so actually, I think I'm just going to save this as a same too. So just name is score.csm, and I think you can just delete this. Okay, so just duplicate it. Yeah, and that's good. Move this around here. Yeah. So let's enter our score scene. Now, um, okay, let's head over to our, then attach the script, I was there, okay, okay, so let's get our labels already, plus four, four, one, Get now okay now I think oh let's as well go back to our main and just put this this is actually supposed to be here. Okay. So let's just move this to a layer of one. There are two score, there are one score. Okay. So now we need to display our score. That is whenever the player we need to object the score. So Let's just put the right updates for point then let's write score one dot text is equals to this this and s which is string player one score a let's change this to a layer 2 so now this is just going to help us update our store so on our ready function let's actually call this so whenever the game starts our values are actually going to be 0 on the beginning so 
of this call. Yeah. I think it's okay for now. Yes. I think all we need to do is just increase the size of our text. So go to your team override, font size. Then let's set this like probably like 30, I think. Then center this, center. Okay, I think. No, let's increase the size a little bit more. All right, 50 is okay. Yeah, I think this is good. So save this, head back. Okay. So just going to adjust this a little. Okay. So head back to amazing. Okay, I think this looks a little good now. So, yeah, so I think our game is actually coming together. All we just need to do work on now is our opponent, then updating our score. Okay, so let's actually start with the score, I think. So, for our score, I think. Okay, yeah, we probably will change this. So now in our main script, just go to your ball, connect the game over on ball game over, connect. Now this is actually going to receive a value, just like as you can see, where right the ball. Um yeah, so the is a direction. So we're going to know which player was the winner. So let's actually write that. Our main script. Um, let's just go up oh, already. But uh, once it gets this, so let us call it surface. It was to get no that is our A, B, B. Yeah. Okay. So, all I'm going right now is interface. So, I think we need to create a fine winner um, function in our HUD. So, we're going to pass the power winner. Yeah, the winner. So, I think this all winner. Since we're just checking if the user win, so let's just user win. Just pass our user win here. Okay. So, let's go to our HUD. Like this, so one fine winner. We're going to receive a argument which is going to be of a typo, a boolean. We're not going to be. so now. All we're going to check is if this value which is our if which is going to say if the player is the winner so if the player is actually winner i think I want to update the score by one else we want to update the player to score by one Okay. 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 Yeah, I think this is good. So now, whenever this happens, just is call our update score. Then I think this will actually work. So let's test this out. 
I'm just going to let the ball go out of the screen. Okay, yeah, as you can see now, it's, it's updates for the computer. So now, I think, as you can see now, whenever the ball goes out of the screen, the paddle, okay, as you can see now, the player, the ball decides to take the down direction like before, so speaking, a random direction every time we run the game. That was actually the use of the random mics we used here for our ball. Yeah, so it allows you to pick a different value whenever the game starts. But as you can see now, our game, the ball is not resetting. So I think we need to handle that. So, me. Okay, so. So, in our main script, I think we need to call this function. Um, let us say okay. Position. Okay. I think we are it yet. So whenever game over, it says game. Okay. Let's test this out now. Okay, that's good. But now I think whenever a ball goes out, it's just going to take the same direction it took before. So, okay. Oh, is that right? Taking in random direction. Hmm. Let's see it go as hmm. Okay, so that's good. Oh, I think the ball is actually taking its previous motion never so. Going downward, yeah. So it does continue its previous motion. It's, actually, it's not actually taking a new direction. So we need to go to our ball speed direction here. Yeah. Remove. Let's on it here. Yeah. So ball dot direction. So I think now this is going to like take a different direction. The ball sponsor we need to again. Okay, we also need to call it in our ready function. So okay, so we said ready position. Let's change this to set again. And this should work. Okay, so first goes out of the screen, takes as we really works. Okay, so you can see now previously the ball is going down, but now it's actually going up to different direction each time. Now, I think all we need to do is work on our AI. So, for our AI, firstly, let's Create a new scene. Yeah, I'm going to inherit from our answer dot gd. Change this to computer or player two, whatever you like. Then add a collision shape. For a collision shape, set this to rectangle. 
then I think I'm going to take actually we'll just copy this on your pair script. Actually, let's copy it with the position shape. So our computer is also actually going to use this. So okay, we have a great so create your computer script and here is from actor. Okay, I'll just paste this. Okay, now for our computer, let's call it physics, which says going to use a move computer for the other screens, move and slide. Then I think. I'm is okay. going to use this, so let's copy this to clamp this position. So, yeah, I think that's good. So now let's work on our outer movement. Okay, so for the computer, it's actually going to be a simple script. What we just want to do is whenever the ball is moving to the player side, we want our computer paddle to center itself here in the middle, center its position. Then, whenever it's coming back to it whenever I reach it, have the screen. We want the computer to just follow wherever this ball is moving. Nothing can so let's go to our computer script our direction. Okay, I think firstly we need to assign the ball. So you can get the ball current position or which is going to be your factor body to be like this then go to your computer save after the session then for your player to you can actually get rid of this Say instance computer. Okay. So let's just begin this to layer three. Okay, we need we haven't saved our screen. Okay, we have an error so those as for now okay now everyone okay now just all you need to do is just assign this ball to the computer then head over to your to your move computer now on this direction equals to in size divided by two I think yeah just test this out first so we want to get up the screen that's normalized so what this is just going to do is okay. I don't think we're actually doing this. So use a for slash. Okay, yeah, so we can instead of writing everything out here, we can just continue it on the new line. So now if now if the pad paddle position 
you need to get the distance, the value position distance from the pole above. So position dot distance to pole dot position. Now it is greater than seven hundred. Okay, we want to. Okay, yeah. So this is going to center our paddle if the ball is greater than 700. Else, we want our ball definition minus the paddle position dot normalize. Okay, I think it's actually good. So this is all going to be value for the ball direction. So the normalized is just going to get its direction. We don't actually need its magnitude. And velocity dot y equals to our direction dot y times the speed. Of our body. Okay, so um, I think this is good. Let's test this out at my point keyboard. Okay, so as you can see now, our body just center itself around the screen. So now it's the ball is coming to the ball. Now just follows the ball around or I think. Is okay. Let's actually really see how good. Okay, so I think let's just actually increase this. Super inspired. So just increase the computer audio speed. So let it go faster than. So you can actually react faster to each ball whenever it's coming. And this again. Okay, for process of the wall. Um, I think, yeah, it's okay. So let's just take care of some of these errors of data. This one now actually really good. Okay. So let's run this again. Okay, I think that is good. Okay, let's just try to move. Okay, as you can see now, we can't go beyond. Okay, now, so I think everything is working. Now we have our ping pong game complete. So we've come to the end of our tutorial. And that was actually a really long video, but yeah, I think our game looks amazing. Well, there were really some problems with the audio during recording and once I was editing them, so sorry for that and why everything will be filled before the next video. Also, I just like to say that this I this is just going to make one month of me start to learn game development and I think Kudos is actually the first game engine I'm ever using so I felt I really didn't explain some of the words well so probably I'll try working on that but I think we actually did good I think uh, this is actually a good game I actually did so for now please hit the like button subscribe and I think I'll see you in our next video.